Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Be With Me. Seven minutes of biblical wonder, and hopefully a whole day worth of wondering after that. We are in season two, episode 19. Uh, subscribe at bewithme.us. That's the website. And we are in a passage in John chapter 11 about the death of Lazarus. When we left the story yesterday, Jesus was saying, let's go back to Judea, to the land of Judah, to the land of Jerusalem. And uh, it's kind of this feast town where there's often celebration and sacrifice and joy and singing and feasting there. So many people wanted to go to Jerusalem. But for Jesus... It's a place of tension. Jesus had been uh, threatened with stoning twice and getting thrown off a cliff once because he has been claiming to be God in name and claiming scripture for himself like he did with Isaiah and, and referencing um, equality with God. So people are pretty tense and pretty anxious about him and the tensions are high. So for him, it's not exactly a, a feast town. So let's read the story. This is John chapter 11. We left it where Jesus is saying, let's go back into Judea. Let's go back into Israel. This is verse 7. Then after, his, after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. If anyone walks in the light, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. Verse 11. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. Then the disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, and they thought he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. Verse 15, and for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Let's just talk about Thomas for a second. So we have a group fear here. Uh, Rabbi, the Jews were seeking now to stone you and we're going to go there again. So there's this fear in 12 of the disciples. And then like so many things, courage comes from a single individual. And that comes through Thomas in verse 16. So the danger, the tension is clearly described here. Let's go that we may die with him. So the disciples knew that going to Jerusalem was no uh, a picnic as it had been in previous kind of feast days. So we encounter, are going to encounter the resurrection of Lazarus here. For those of you that know the story, hope I just didn't ruin it. And it's a spectacular miracle, and it all depends on this. Either Jesus has this power or he's not God. And it anticipates and foreshadows and sort of paves the way for his own death and resurrection. Um, so... It's a critical thing for all of us Christian. It's the reason that Christians don't grieve like others. We grieve with one eye on the hole in the ground, the grave, but we also grieve uh, with one eye towards the, the resurrection, a little bit towards the resurrection of Lazarus and a lot toward the re resurrection um, of the Lord. This this uh, The two verses, are there not 12 hours in the day, probably means that Jesus is saying, hey, it's it's the daylight of my life. I have something I need to accomplish. It's what I want to do. It's what I must do. It is my joy to walk through this, even though it's going to involve my uh, suffering and my death. For a couple of verses, three verses, there's this big confusion as well. Is Lazarus sleeping? Is he getting better? Or has he, has he died, died? And the disciples are a little bit confused, maybe because Jesus says that his illness does not lead to death. We talked about this yesterday, is that his illness actually leads through death. 
and then to his life. Ironically, the funny part about the story that's not in the story is Lazarus has to die a second time after he gets raised from the dead, just like the rest of us. So this is a, a story, not a story, an account, an event, an actual thing, as we talked about yesterday, that Jesus demonstrates uh, his power over death. So he, he clarifies that with the disciples, and Jesus tells them plainly, Lazarus has died. And by the time he gets there, Lazarus is going to be in the tomb for four days. So good in death, good and died. And then here's the funny verse of today. Uh, for your sake, I am glad. I'm glad I wasn't there. In other words, he's saying, this might be the best thing that ever happened to you. Why? Because I'm happy that Lazarus died? No. Jesus... Uh, when he gets there, is going to weep and he's going to be moved and is going to be greatly troubled, which means a little bit angry, a little bit pissed off uh, about this whole thing. So Jesus is not excited about death. Um, he didn't design us for this. Death is a part of the curse. Death is the part of the reason that he came and he hates death. Imagine this, ladies and gentlemen. This is from Revelation chapter 21, literally the second to last page of the Bible. 21.3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and he will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. Then he describes what it's going to be like in heaven. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. So this world that we live in, with death being such a big part of it, it's not going to last. He didn't design us for this. It's part of the curse. It's going to go away. And this is what makes him glad: is this is part of the process that you're going to get. You're going to have your faith built. You get to encounter this too. You're going to see me do this, and we. He probably is happy that we get to encounter the story of Lazarus as well. It's a watershed story. It's going to either build a brick in your house of faith or it's going to tear it down. And he knows, here's the thing, is the compassion that the Lord had. He knows that we're dust and he knows that we bring only dirt to this equation, kind of like the prodigal son. And he knows that even the disciples, even though they're enthusiastic, he knows that their faith is weak and they're going to abandon the field. It says that all the disciples left him and fled with, with hurry. He knows this, but he's glad that he can demonstrate that he has power through Lazarus, that he has power over death. And he's glad that we get a chance to believe. See you tomorrow.